Hello. Welcome to our um, second Tuesday of November free uh, watercolor session online with me and Hema. Um, that's spelled H-E-M-A. If you imagine a Y in the middle of that, it's literally Hey Ma. That's how I say my name. <laughs> uh, we have Claudia and Rima. Um, they're two of my um, just longstanding watercolor students, uh, friends. They're amazing artists. And I uh, requested them to join me today. So I would be speaking to them and sort of painting with them, but with all of you as well. So um, I see we have about 48 people maybe on now. Um, if you have questions, put them in the chat box. Um, somebody will alert me to a question and I will try and answer them as I go along. Um, Rima, are you on there? Okay. I am. I am. Okay. Hey. All right. So we have Claudia and Rima here with us. Um, and uh, Rima's doing an exciting thing. She's actually with friends and painting with them. This is such a great way to paint. Uh, take a, just take an hour and paint and uh, create something. But you can also just observe. You don't have to paint. You can just observe and uh, ask questions or just take it all in and see what it makes you feel like. Because if it makes you feel like doing more watercolor, uh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Uh, I chose this image. Uh, if you all can see the painting in the email that was sent out to you, you should be able to see an, uh, a painting um, that I did a few years ago. Um, it was done from um, a vantage point. It's a balcony view in Bangalore. Uh, it's where my parents live. And I was visiting and I would paint early in the morning at 4 a.m. because that's when the kids would sleep and I would paint. Or they would be sleeping and I would be cleaning. Um, and I really loved it. A city at night is just so strange, exciting. The colors change. Everything looks so um, like a completely different city to me. Uh, and I remember thinking that um, nothing looked like, nothing looked familiar. Everything looked like strange and new. And I loved that because it was a view that I had seen, you know, for years. And I, you know, I felt like I knew it, but at night, everything looks different. I've sent you two reference photos. You should have gotten that in the email. Um, both reference photos are uh, from a similar, uh, you know, position on the balcony, but from two different areas. And uh, one of them is a bit more pulled back. And one of them is a little closer. And I think that's just because of the uh, the way I took it or from the floor I took it, I may have gone to uh, another floor because we do, my we have another family member in the same building. Um, but it's the same area. It's uh, a place called Maleshwaram and it's in uh, Bangalore. Um, I sent two because I wanted you all to see that if you wanted specifics, you do have this one photo with specifics in it. Um, like you can see a bit of the corner of the building. You can see um, a little more detail and it looks more like twilight you know uh, in the other picture where you can see the palm trees kind of to the bottom left um, it's gone past twilight it's getting darker I tried to send a night picture um, I noticed that somebody did not get the photos I'm hoping Melissa maybe can yes help. absolutely um, everybody check your junk mail just in case for Monday morning. We sent them all around that's yesterday, but I am going to put them in the chat in just a second. You'll see a link um, above. I actually put them right there. They say city at night one and city at night two. If you don't see them, I'm going to put a link right now. Just give me two minutes. Yeah, thank you so much, Melissa. Um, yeah, we've been having people register all the way till like an hour ago, I think. <laughs> uh, it's a little tricky to keep up with that. Um, and uh, we'll get better at this, but we're really um, so lucky to have Melissa manage all of the behind the scenes and um, she'll have a recording up too. It's amazing uh, what the Arts Council is doing uh, for us. So as you can see, these are the two photographs and um, in a few minutes, you'll, you'll get a sense once you see the images about what I'm talking about. And if you see the painting, it's kind of wild. It's a wild 
uh, representation. Uh, it's my take. Um, I remember thinking there was a lot of purple, a lot of violet purple, uh, but also Bangalore is a very green city and the view I had had a lot of trees um, and something about the tree coloring looked looked strange and ghostly. Um, so I wanted to capture a bit of that. Um, what else do I want to say? Oh, a lot of the buildings have really strong lights at the base and they're sort of like up they they light up the whole building or they have huge reflections. So, um, okay, somebody else is asking for the painting. I'm sure we are figuring this out. Please do check the chat. And Melissa is really working hard to get this easy for you. Um, all right, I'm going to get going with this. Uh, Claudia, Rima, you good? You guys are, I think. <laughs> all ready to come. All right, all right. Okay, um, I also want to point out to everybody, this is not a step-by-step -step tutorial. This is my impression of these photographs, the scene, the feeling. I think we've all seen a city at night at some point and you have some sense, even if you live in the suburbs, um, you can look at, um, you know, like you go walking at night on a summer night and if you walk up a hill and just see a little bit of the suburb, it's almost the same feeling. I'm not drawing these buildings to make them look like New York style, you know, flashy. This is a, a very residential part of uh, Bangalore that I'm painting. It's like, it's like Jersey City, let's say, you know, or even Jersey City has changed a lot. Uh, but anyways, you get the idea that I would like you to find your interpretation, find a playful in, uh, just start playing with the colors. So I'm gonna start with the sky. I got a bit of purple. So like I wrote in the email, there's a list of colors and everything. Um, the color I'm using right now is a mineral violet. Um, you guys can see that. Mineral violet, we have quinacridone gold. These are some of the colors I'm using. The list is in that email. Um, the paints I chose were some darks, some brights. Um, after my last painting session with all of you, I got feedback that a lot of them were struggling to keep up with the names. And I just want you all to know the reason I simplified it this time and called them darks and brights. Because if you look at this painting, there's some darks and there's some brights. Just think of it like that. I'm, I'm talking to a wide audience today. Um, everybody from absolute beginners, uh, like my very brave shout out to my... Uh, uh, my niece, um, she and her uh, husband uh, just jumped in and painted for the first time completely like just, I, I just loved it. And um, they did it last time with the um, the maple tree that we painted. Um, and it's that playful interpretation. It's that idea that, you know, you can take the whatever color. So let's say you have a lemon yellow in your palette. Use that. You don't have to use my fancy bismuth vanadate yellow. It's a mouthful. It's on that list, I think. Um, but if not, I might have written down quinacridone gold. I tend to use Daniel Smith colors. Again, brand does not matter. If you have a little kiddie box like my niece had, you can still paint beautifully with it. That's why I chose this photo. I feel like you have some darks, some brights, and they will come together and do what I'm trying to do, okay? So don't get caught up in my fancy paints and my whatever. I just, this is what I have. Right, I usually have like a bar of color here and I kind of play around with the colors and make sure that the colors look the way I want. Um, a simple concept in watercolor, and this is the only one that I'm gonna sort of put across to you guys, is that if you think of a mug of tea, just think of a mug of tea, you have a lot of water, right? So that's your tea consistency, your dilute tea consistency. I'm trying to get my camera to focus. All right, there we go, tea consistency. And then you have the milk. And the milk is a bit more saturated. It's a bit thicker. So that goes into sort of, you know, like, like this, okay? That's a bit more color there. And then you have honey. Honey is your, you know, like if you put a, if you have a mug of tea and you put more tea, you have that decoction of tea, uh, you steep your tea bag, then you put your milk, which is a little thicker. And then you put your honey, which would be something like this, a very, very rich, pigmented dark. And this works in three ways. One, it helps you understand that watercolor works transparent best. Like it works, sorry, it works best as a transparent medium. So you wanna enjoy your colors at their transparent best. Um, 
but you're also going to add some darks and then you're going to get really dark. But just like in a mug of tea, you have more transparent layers, less milk. So more tea, less milk, less honey. If you look at this painting, you're going to see parts of it are just left like first wash, just one wash and I've left it. And then I've gone back in with maybe some darker uh, values that are in the milk consistency. And at the very end, I went back in with really dark darks. Those are the honey marks where you have rich pigmentation. You have a lot of pigment in your brush. Yeah. All right. With that little, little tiny introduction to watercolor for those who are very new to this, I'm going to jump in and sort of like play around. And if you notice, um, oh, is Hey Rima, can you Rima and Claudia, you guys can see the painting or is it too blurry? I'm I'm looking at it for it now. I can see. Yeah, it's okay. Let's see. Right. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, all right. I'm trying to make sure that it's focused, but I have a feeling it's got to refocus. There we go. Sharper, right? So, so Hema, when you say that the you have a tea consistency and your first layer, um. These things, the, the colors actually dry lighter than they are, correct? That's true. Like, than so, what you see. Right? That's a great point. So anytime you're painting in watercolor, just know that the colors will always uh, dry lighter. Um, and you adjust for that all the time. So with tea, milk, and honey, um, they're going to be lighter. But the consistency doesn't change. So the transparency level mm -hmm. will remain approximately the same. So if you've really put down a dark, dark, even though it dries lighter, the thickness, you know, uh, that remains. So I hope that makes sense. The opacity, that remains, yeah? Um, I'm going to go in a little bit now and play. I want some of this color to leak down into the buildings. Now, some of you may be wondering, how did I get the white, the actual white highlights or the little street lights and such? A lot of that, um, some were left, like I left like bits of it. So if you see the way I'm moving my brush right now, I'm sort of like moving it around very, very playfully, just not thinking too much about it. I'm going to leak in some blues, purples, and even some greens into the sky. Um, night skies and cities are so fun. They're just, they're just unusual. They have these weird reflections. You can see like the sky looking green sometimes, right? So I'm just going in and playing with this. I did draw a building here. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's in one of the photos. I may or may not keep it. I'm using this photo completely for the joy of inspiration, uh, nothing else. So yeah, I'll keep switching back and forth between the photos just to make sure I'm, I'm you know, sort of on track. Um, as you can see, this painting is progressing with just the sky right now, not much else. I have a really lovely um, Windsor and Newton Payne's Gray that I absolutely love. Um, and if I ever feel like putting in some, you know, muting a color, darkening it, I will consider a Payne's Gray. I don't usually use black, but if you have a black and that's what you're working with today, no worries. Uh, if you mix your black with a bit of blue or violet, you'll find that the black um, gains richness. It becomes less flat, less dull, it gets um, nice and rich. All right, you can see that in some of the buildings, um, uh, or rather, sorry, some of the buildings have are uh, overlapped with trees and whatever. So I want some sharpness. I want some of the buildings to look sharp. And then I want some to just look like they're, I don't know, fuzzy in the distance, whatever, right? So I have my mop that I'm working with right now. It's a Casaneo, it's a Da Vinci Casaneo mop but any big fat mop will be fun for this. And then I have my, my tool that I absolutely adore. Uh, I feel like Princeton needs to hire me for this. I just, I mean, whatever, they need me to be the ambassador. <laughs> uh, I keep talking about this brush. It's the Princeton Aqua Elite Long Round. Um, I do end up having to replace this brush every six months, eight months, because the point will go eventually, but I paint a lot. That point is beautiful. It's got a nice fat, battle body here so it does carry a lot of pigment but it gives me a wide range so for example I'm going to dip into my my beautiful um orange now this is an orange I I recommend if you ever want to buy a really bright incredible orange it's called transparent pyrrole like p-y-r-r 
Is that a double R? P Y R R O L E. Yep, that's what it's called. Oops, give me a second. I need a spot. All right, let's see. How's it going, Rima and Claudia? Are you guys good? Yep. Yeah. Great. All right, we're gonna go in with some orange, like bright. Like this is what that orange looks like. It's it's pretty vibrant. Yeah. Um, you guys will eventually see most of these colors. I think only after the video is done, <laughs> in the final images that are sent out. Uh, but let's get some orange, and I'm gonna start putting in some. So building here, and I've been thinking about keeping it. Like I just want something sharp. It's pretty big here, right? So I might have to just go in and create some shapes. These shapes will get probably some color later on. But for right now, we just want to get some quick definitions. You can see that I'm bleeding it in. I'm playing around. I have some, some shape being, you know, retained, but not too much. And I'm going to just sort of leak some color around. And if I'm not satisfied with some of these building shapes, I can always go over it. So just remember, this city is yours to create. It doesn't have to be a specific city. It can be whatever you want it to be. I tend to go in with lots of large shapes and then sort of slight, start to define the image a little later. So I might move pretty rapidly now to get down some colors, guys, but um, bear with me. Um, I need to, I've, I've got some, let's see, this lovely neutral tint, but I also have the Payne's Gray. I have some Prussian Blue, and these colors give me this beautiful shade. Um, I also want to bring in some of this green, because that was the green that called me to painting. This is strange green that happens in cities. And... There is this coconut tree thing happening here. So I'm just going to put those coconut trees. Now, in terms of perspective and trying to get it to actually look like a city, um, just think of it like this. You have some bigger shapes here, and you have smaller shapes as you go further back. You also have um, shapes getting a little flattened and squat, like you know, tinier as you go towards the horizon. So if you just keep that in mind, it should focus okay it should work out for you okay um i'm gonna go in now and sort of create some definitions i'm gonna go back to my picture because i want to all right let's see Rima, are the kids watching? <laughs> no, they're not. They're busy. Okay, I want to keep a little bit of transparency here because I want to come back in and add some lights. Um, I forgot to mention that the white lights, I'm not using masking fluid, I'm using uh, white gouache. Okay, guys, so I will come in with some white gouache later on. Um, it's a great way to quickly add a street light, uh, you know, window light, whatever. So, plus you can see that I'm leaving. Do you see how crazy this is? This is called the bad haircut stage. <laughs> and the bad haircut stage, uh, which we all experience in our paintings is when you're putting down the washes, you're not really you're not at any stage where you can definitively say, this is a city. You're at a stage where you are recognizing certain shapes, certain colors, and you're just throwing them down. Believe me, it will start to look like a city eventually. It's just, it's gonna take a little while, but I'm getting there. All right. And I usually find that once I start to get some of these um, shapes and colors in, I feel like I've covered the whites. <laughs> I, I have to leave white because in watercolor, when in doubt, leave white. It will always benefit you. Um, but I also want to cover a little bit of the 
the page. So I can actually start to define around these shapes, which is sort of important because without this, I will be spending hours creating um, shapes and forms, which I don't want. I want to create this kind of a wild painting and then go in. Yeah. All right. I'm going to Can I? Yeah. Um, uh, someone's asking if we could just uh, have this, have the camera just on the painting. Yeah, So absolutely. we could see it a little bit better. That's a great idea. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to go in now and start to define. I want some of the buildings to get a little crisper. And for that, I really want to define this one building. So I kind of just go in with some lovely thin lines and I can see that the roof is a little dark. So I'm going to create in Bangalore, like many Indian cities, um, or maybe here, uh, tends to have these things on the roof. They'll have, I don't know, water tanks. They'll have, um, okay, something's going on with the color. All right, let me see. Rima and Claudia, you can't see the color, right? It's not orange anymore. Which which the uh, the yellow? Uh, can you see this orange? Does it look orange to you? Um, it looks it looks like it's um closer to a yellow. That's orange. When you get it close like that, I can see the orange. Yeah, I just need this camera to refocus. I'm wondering why it's doing that. <laughs> oh well. All right, I'm gonna do the best I can to give you guys a sense of. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. It was showing all the colors before. Mm -hmm. Um, it always looked sort of yellow to me. It never looked really truly orange. Oh, All right. Let's see. Let's see. All right. Sorry, people. Technical difficulty. Give me a second. All right. I'm gonna do this for a second, and I think it looks a little better. So. All right. Um, all right. More about the building. So I want to draw a couple of windows. Now, if you think in terms of perspective, it does matter that I get some of this uh, in perspective. Uh, because if I don't, then it really won't read as a building, right? But I'd like you to all to notice that my brushwork is really, um, it's very staccato. It's in and out. It's not exactly a, a continuous line, yeah? Um, and also, um, excuse me for a second. I'm trying, I'm getting distracted for a second. All right, here's the building line. Um, I also want to mention that this is the white I'll be using. It's a white gouache. There we go. It's uh, by a company, uh, which company is this? Oh my God, Hallbeam. And Halloween is awesome at this stuff. All right, let's take it back here. All right, I'm gonna start creating some definition here. I've got another building coming up here. Even a few straight lines like this will immediately read as buildings. And you guys will see that um, as you keep painting. So I'm gonna, hey, Claudia, Rima, I'm gonna go silent for a few minutes as in I'm, I'm here, I can hear you guys, but I need to be silent to get some of this in. <laughs> so give me a minute. I've got a few big trees here coming in. And I'm going to go in with the orange again. I also feel like the orange is the color that makes this these buildings, like a rust orange even, somehow really pops and creates this feeling of, multi, like, you know, just city grime, city things happening. All right. I'm going in with some definition here. You'll notice that a lot of my pen marks or my brush marks, sorry, are like, are like, you know, like little Morse code-like marks. Um, that's 
quite enough information from, from my side, um, I feel, uh, for me to feel satisfaction and to feel like, oh, that looks good. You know, like I'm, I'm happy with that. So you can see that I don't always draw every detail. I will leave things um, unsaid, you know. <laughs> uh, it's nice to have that space, those gaps. Um, I also want to create a really lovely blue-green that I had in the original painting, which I felt like kind of gave this beautiful glow that was like a dark street-like glow. So I'm just gonna add some of that in. And you can see my brush strokes too. They're very, they're very um, big rapid strokes, even at this stage, not quite ready to commit to a specific, you know, shape here. So I'm just gonna fill up some of those whites. I don't need so many whites here. Okay, some of those whites are too big. Now, if you see these white shapes in here, do you see how like some of the shapes are just, they're not, they're not necessary. They don't give you the full. Okay, once again, this is out of focus. Right? It's out of focus again. Oh, that sucks. Better soon. All right, let me get some night sky color going. Yeah. Okay. Some of the details, you can see them. And while I wait for the top part to dry, I'm gonna to start to come in with some real crisp details right here. So here, that's when you start to have the fun of shapes. Which shapes read better? Which ones make you feel like it's a tree? Which ones make you feel like it's a building? Are they crisp? Are they, you know, like maybe I'll draw a building right here and sort of put some lines in, or maybe there's some kind of a, a you know, pretty industrial detail thing going on here. So I'll just put that in, and then behind it, I can create some tree-like shapes. And the other thing in watercolor is to add soft and hard edges to any brush stroke. And when you do that, you get these beautiful, like really marvelous, of uh, things that you really can't get in many other mediums. You, you only enjoy this sort of freedom truly in watercolor, or at least that's my bias. <laughs> Do you see how this bottom corner is beginning to read city? Does that feel like that to you, um, Prima and uh, Claudia? Yes. Yeah? Sure yeah. yeah. All right. I'm gonna yeah. at this stage, uh, give people a sense of what would it look like if I suddenly added in some little bits of yellow uh, because there's some, there's somebody's got like some lights down there and these little lights are, you know, flying away in the, not flying away, sorry, uh, uh, down on the streets. Um, there are some parts here that feel a bit unfinished, unsaid, you know, I just want to get that sorted. So I'm going to go in with some lovely greens and just kind of go in with some shapes here. Again, creating these wild tree shapes. Um, same over here, but this time, whenever it's dry, and this is not a very dry spot, but I can add some greenery there. Maybe it's dry here, I think, yeah. So here, whenever it's dry in my, in my um, painting, I'm trying to add in some, some shapes that read like building, but are not quite, fully defined so I can go back in and I'm going to take some some lovely honey consistency now and just sort of add some of those windows all right and I think I want one of these windows to be really sort of maybe with some slightly brown color like a grimy slightly grimy color like a city grime color so that would mean Some little building window shapes, something going on there. There's another big window here, maybe, and there's maybe a balcony like I was standing at. And let's see. Uh, 
All right, some more shapes there. Um, I'm gonna need some really dark darks right in the in the in the depth of the city over there. So I'm gonna move in now rapidly with this. So first of all, I'm gonna go in and start to create what I think of as um oh uh, okay, skyline. That's what it is. So we're gonna create a skyline and maybe we'll create some check patterns because sometimes buildings have that weird check pattern that we, we see in uh, when there's huge buildings and they have like lots of glass and stuff. So I'm just gonna draw this. So I'm gonna create another building here because I have the opportunity given that some parts are dry. Um, let's see. Claudia? Yes, ma'am. Do <laughs> you think you can give me a heads up when we reach the the um, 745 mark? Okay, sure. Yeah. 731 right now. Oh, 731, eh? Okay. Time to start putting in. Some lovely darks here. Um, let's see. And I'm gonna put, you can see me putting some honey consistency stuff and some shapes in the background, like there's more buildings, there's, you know, and Bangalore is also a bit of a hilly city. So there are areas where it sort of starts to look like it's going upwards and that's just because of the nature of the city. All right, there we go. More interest. And if you squint at your painting, that's the other great trick that always works for me. Anytime I start to feel like overwhelmed by my painting, just squint at it. If you squint at it, you'll immediately see what's working, what's not working. Is it interesting? Are there too many whites? Like for example, right now I'm feeling like there's a building here, but I have to cover this area and make it sort of interesting. Maybe there's a, a tiny palm tree, another one here. Lots of coconut trees in Bangalore, best coconuts. <laughs> um, so I thought I'll add some of that in. Hey, Claudia, is it reading uh, to you well, uh, Rima? Does this look like? Yes, yes. Yeah. I'm trying to follow along <laughs> at yeah. the same time. I know. Yes, exactly. It, it looks great. I mean, it's really coming together. And um, the details really are making it into a city. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. Because it does take a little while. And eventually, you'll start to feel mm -hmm. more different because you'll be like, oh, yeah, I know what that is. I know what this shape is. The shapes are kind of coming from obviously a lot of city observation. I do spend time, uh, every time I'm back home, I paint the scene. So I do have an advantage there, I realize. Uh, but I want to, I just want you all to get a sense of how insanely playful is this, right? This is just like. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. Okay, some of the shapes, if they go wrong, well, guess what? This photo, this painting uh, does not believe in right or wrong. It's it's fine to mess up, okay? Um, there's this weird, awkward shape down here, if you guys see this. And I'm not quite sure what I did there. So I'm going to go back to my photo references, make sure I, you know, what was I doing? What was I thinking? I have a feeling I wanted some some sort of like building structure here that's in darkness. So I'm just going to put that in. Maybe this building is the is the shape, you know? So maybe that itself becomes the shape of the... Uh, and the trees now are lit instead of the other way around. So let's, let's try that. It's so fun to just go in and experiment. I'm mixing in some yellow with my green just to get some fresh color. Just a little bit, not too much, because really you couldn't see this fresh green at night. But when I squint, I can imagine that, you know, some parts would be lit up just because the city is so vibrant. And um, does that shape read okay now? Or... So I think that, I think that dark building, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Sorry, go ahead. Wait. Show it. Show show me which one you just defined again. Yes, yes. 
So I was thinking, while it's so nice and crisp and, you know, I'm going in literally from the tube. <laughs> That's how I paint usually, but you can put this out on your uh, palette. If you go in and you add these little splotches of light, um, they sort of naturally blur because if you put honey consistency paint on a wet surface, um, it will just blur. Uh, it'll, it'll stay. It won't completely bloom or, you know, spread, mm -hmm. but it will give you this lovely, you know, um, soft white effect. And I'm going to go into some of these buildings where I don't put too many highlights everywhere and you don't need every part of the building um, all lit up. You just want enough to make it read building. <laughs> That's all. You don't, you, know, you don't need too much. Um, I'm going to bring in some rust orange just a bit here. I felt like we lost some of that lovely mm -hmm. color. Um, I also feel like the skyline kind of got lost. And I really want a minaret or two, uh, some like, you know, like towers, things that are like way far away in the distance there. Um, so maybe there's some things back there, yeah? I'm also bringing in some green orange um, just to vary the kind of dark marks I'm making back there. Um, I think in the original painting, I actually took it fairly high. I might not take it that high here, but I will add some, um, just some details here, maybe. Let's see. Oh, um, you can also add some like, you know, sharp lines, like straight and across. And that too immediately starts to read like a building, right? Uh, if you have a flat brush on hand, which I didn't want to confuse and add more brushes today to our um, our painting. Um, so I did not mention that, but you could use a flat brush too. I, I, I noticed here the opportunity to create another building. So I take it. Um, and you can add some detail, you can blur it, you can add some more here. Okay, there we go. Um, I feel like I want some whites right in this building, sort of as though it's in the blue. And now for that lovely part, which I had in the other painting too, which is to go in and just sort of add some whites. Um, and if you squint at my painting right now, I, don't know if, I, I know it's not the best view because it's a video or whatever, but there's too many whites here, okay? And whites of the wrong shape. <laughs> you know what I mean, guys? Um, the whites of the wrong <laughs> shape start to read like, what are those whites? But I, I want street lights. I want reflected lights. I want glass. So I got to reduce the whites um, until I can make them read the way I want. So either I shape each one to make it circular, um, you know, to read like street light, uh, or, ooh, ooh, I managed to get a, a very tall palm tree. <laughs> That's a win. Uh, another one here, maybe. It looks like fun. Um, some greens down in the front. Um, I love bringing in some city yellow orange um lights uh they seem to abound in cities especially this nighttime sort of strange glow um let's see some little yellows there uh, i'm in fact putting in some direct uh cadmium yellow in some areas do you see how that sort of creates that shine if you notice that area right there mm -hmm. yeah yeah, that's good. Yeah. Right? It creates this really lovely... I'm going to bring this up for a second for people to... Is this in focus, uh, guys? Mostly, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. All right. So this way you get a sense of all the crazy marks. See how insane that painting is? <laughs> all right. I'm now going to go in with some bright honey consistency yellow right in the middle of some of these blue patches um, just so we can pretend like oh yeah there's, there's lots of lights in this city um, people are up all hours and you know so it's a nice way to bring back mm -hmm. some of the sorry you said something somebody said something nope I didn't. Okay. Okay. now the other thing you can do at this stage is to start to see are any of the shapes uninteresting like oh you know i don't know about this area do you see that not so interesting some of the other areas more interesting 
when that happens, you know, it's, it's, it's a great idea to just go in, squint at it and say, what's missing? And I think it's because I'm not seeing enough of a, a delineation between the building. So I'm going to go in and actually, I'm going to put in like, maybe sort of almost like a white glow around the building. It might be interesting to do that, like the opposite of what we've been doing so far. So that can be an interesting mark. Over there. I'm not quite sure what it reads like as yet. Uh, and that's the other thing with watercolors. I feel like if you're going to paint in this way, which is so wild, free, and, uh, you know, can take you in all kinds of directions, uh, you have to trust that you may have to go back to the painting the next day. <laughs> right? It's You never know. You might actually find yourself... Um, oh, look, I made a black tower here. Okay, let's see what happens. Uh, you might find that the next day you see the whole painting, you're like, oh, I know what to do. And that happens all the time to all of us, right? And I think Rima and um, Claudia have both been in my class long enough to see that even with their own work, like to just see how the work changes, right? Uh, right, guys? Mm -hmm. The next day, maybe? Or... Absolutely. Although I don't ever go back. <laughs> I love the honesty. She's like, I'm done. We have, lots of, we have lots of ugly teenage periods going right? through each thing. Yeah, and it happens. It happens. It's this ugly haircut, ugly whatever. And it just sort of, um, you, you just have to trust it. You know, you just have to trust that you will get. All right. So I put in some more darks than I wanted to, but. And I'm going to wipe my tape just so you guys can get a sense of where the painting ends because I know right now it's a little tricky to see with all my marks here. Sort of getting a better picture now. Let's see. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Now, I'm going to point to some things. Like, I love that stroke there, but it's not reading tree. <laughs> um, it's, 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 and it's too far away for it to be that big a shape. So this is a great time to go in, redefine it, say, all right, I, I don't think that's really supposed to be a tree at all. Sorry about the dog sound. Uh, that's my snowy trees stressed when people leave the house. All right. Um, let's see. I like that better. It's like, a, it's like a shape that goes around this building maybe. And so it makes it feel like mm -hmm. it's something in the back. Um, it's defining a whole series of buildings over here, as you can see. Mm -hmm. uh, here I have another opportunity to put in some dark windows, maybe even a sort of, some kind of a ridge of building. There's like maybe some other building tower stuff going on there. Um, let's see. This is beginning to look fairly interesting. Definitely different from the other one, right, guys? Uh, definitely different from the other painting. Uh, but then, you know, we don't sign up to make the same painting. We just we work with what we're feeling inspired to do in today's image, today's inspiration. Um, I'm going to put in some highlights now a little bit. I want some like street lights sort of. The other way to do street lights is to add a tiny bit of water. Let's say you have a very dry area. I'll do it in a very dark spot here. Okay, so I put a little bit of water. I take my honey consistency white and I just sort of blob it in there. You see that? It blots, it, it kind of has a nice soft effect. Um, so you can do that um, in another way, which is you take the white, you go into a wet area like I was showing you before, and you just lay it down there and it will naturally bleed a little. Are we good on time? It's 7.44, okay. 7.44, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, let's see. Okay. 
you know, I haven't seen your um, cameras at all. I'm sorry if at any point were you showing your work or talking to it, talking to me with it, or I, I don't know if it's visible. Oh, my work? No, no, I haven't shown it. Okay. No, me neither. Okay. No, it's... Um, just redefining this building here a little bit because I was feeling like it wasn't working out. Um, I also feel like some of these windows need to get defined there. Um, that building still doesn't look that interesting to me. I'm going to go in with just a touch of orange. Like pure orange, just going in holy, and creating some darker values there. Yeah, I feel like and you know how the colors do dry lighter. So if you want to bleed in some color, you can you can soften it, but you still want it to be a little intense. Okay, let's see. I feel like oops, sorry about the sound. I feel like we need some more white street lights and really bright yellow ones. And you know the funniest thing? This I forgot actually to tell everybody, but if you have um some scarlet red. Um, something really warm, bright. Traffic lights are working, you know, at night. They're, they're still working. So a nice bright bit of red somewhere would really sort of add drama, you know, interest, like, oh, maybe not there. But maybe here, maybe maybe down here a little bit. You know, just some, just some lights. Besides, you also have reds in signages that don't get turned off at night sometimes or you know, just just little bits of color. Um, let's see. Yeah, but we have a question in the chat that says, uh, "My eye keeps getting drawn to the upper left blue area. Should there be a building there?" And maybe another way to ask this is, "How do you decide where to stop? How do you decide what is <laughs> turning into back background or horizon?" Um, yeah, what do you think? Uh, yeah. So, uh, the upper what corner? That's the part I missed. Sorry, I was hearing it, but. Upper left blue area. This area? Yeah. I absolutely agree with whoever said that. So um, that's a great catch. And you can add in some little dots and dashes, like sort of make that, you know, change the values there and bring in some drama, bring in some interest. Um, I would bring in some yellow because you always see some yellow in a city, even if it's far away. You'll see little bits of light, you know, peeking through the trees, things of that. Uh, whoever commented on that, um, please do let me know if this starts to look better. We still have a little time. So if it starts to read better, um, talk to me. Yeah, that's a great, great catch, great question. Um, in the painting I sent you guys, it's definitely a different take, of course. Uh, plus, I wasn't speed painting like I am today. <laughs> um so when I'm speed painting, I guess, you know, I have to just accept that some things, you know, I will not be able to correct with you guys. I might be able to correct it later, though. Um, because it's a speed painting, I may not catch everything. But if you do, if you see something, please speak up. Tell me. All right. Lights in the distance. I think there's always lights in the distance. There's this glow happening. There's um, things shining because, well... I think big cities just never sleep. So when do you stop? Okay, that was the other part of the question, right? When do you stop? Uh, one, today when the time is up, uh, for me at least, because I, I don't want to touch this painting after I'm done because I'd really like for it to be alive. Um, sort of, you know, I want you guys to feel like you really got to see how the painting was made. Um, I'd say when the negative shapes in this image are interesting, that's when you would stop. If all the negative shapes, like if you go around, you know, like I often do this when I'm painting, I'll go and look at each section. Um, just like that uh, comment where they said, oh, the top left hand. Um, go into each section, say, all right, is this section satisfying? Is this section satisfying? What can I do different? Um, is that quadrant interesting? Is it a shape that doesn't read right? You know, maybe maybe some of the shapes have gotten lighter as you've worked and it no longer reads right, you know? Um, if that's the case, then that's another opportunity to go in and, but yeah, at some point you kind of have to stop, right? You just have to accept what it is. And I'd say, 
I'd say that's always a hard, hard decision. Uh, but one, I feel like you know, but you continue because you think you can get it better. So you'll get better at that decision making is my point. Um, you'll start to feel like, nope, I know I'm going to destroy this if I feel anymore. <laughs> uh, or, um, or you time yourself. I've done that sometimes. I time myself just so I can say, all right, whatever I can get done in an hour, that's it, like today. Um, the other way is to take a photograph, convert it to black and white, and if it leads well, it's probably done. Um, another way is to wait for a week. Don't touch it. And I do this all the time with my students. I'll often demand that they stop painting uh, or give, give it a chance you know, the next week because it's important to give yourself the opportunity to trust that you can stop painting and come back to it, especially in the early stages. I think now I'm at a point where I usually, if I'm done painting, I'm done painting. But then we have Rima who <laughs> has always followed that. Uh, beginner or not, and she's definitely no beginner anymore. So, um, uh, what do you guys think, Claudia, Rima? Do you have your suggestions on what you think is a good point to stop? I think it's pretty good right now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, but in general, like in general, what do you think? Like, what is your view on when do you stop a painting? I mean, you know me. I generally stop um, when. I'm done. Like when I'm done with the class, I don't ever go back to my paintings. Right. Very rarely do I go back. Um, just because for me, it's, um, I don't have the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I um, usually don't, I'm slow. I'm the slow person in the class. So I usually don't finish in the class and I will come home and I will work on it at home and finish it at home. Right. Right. It's but, done. It's done. Right. So that doneness, I think that's what this this person was saying. It's like, what is what feels done? And I, I think honestly that changes from painting to painting, from even mood to mood. Like, you know, some days I just I want to go super fast and I just feel done very quickly. Um, some I go back and I touch up. I, I do. I I feel like it's not done. I have to do more. So yeah, but it, it's nice to pause right now and take a look. I, I'm not convinced that this is a finished painting. And the reason I say that is because I have to wait for this to dry. Now, one of the things in watercolor, it's a meditative medium, actually, um, because while you do need to be fast and work on things exactly at the right time, because if you lose the opportunity when it's damp, you're not going to get those nice crystal, you know, nice blurs and softness. And um uh, they're lost opportunities then if you don't work fast. But on the other hand, you can always re-wet. You can always reconsider. You don't have to, um, you know, you don't have to do it all at one go. Um, I feel like I lost a point there or something. Was I saying something that, and then I didn't finish the point. <laughs> Sorry. I, I didn't, I didn't notice that you did. Right, I'm going to put some whites in there. Yeah. So we have we, we have these, um, these, we'll have another session in December. I'm forgetting the exact date, but it's a second Tuesday in December. Um, I'm doing this partly because I just love giving people an idea of what watercolor could be like. Um, the playfulness. It doesn't have to be exacting. Uh, if you want exact watercolor of course it's a great medium for that as well and there are teachers who do it really really well uh i think uh melissa just put it down in the chat um when the next classes oh uh, the next uh, free session um but i just want people to see that this is another way to paint a lot of my paintings um are rima and claudia do you have do you have something to say about <laughs> what my style is um I think it's very high contrast in, in a lot of your paintings um, and it melds the wet on wet look with with detail, but it's in, in its own way, it's impressionistic. It's not realistic and it's That's fun. Good. It's playful. It's the opposite of Bob Ross, but it, <laughs> it, it, achieves, it achieves the same effect. 
So <laughs> you, she, it makes she you like, yeah, no, it makes, it makes it, you know, she starts off with it just looking like a hot mess and then she'll add like five more lines and then it's like this beautiful painting. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, buddy. I'll never forget that now. Bob Ross. <laughs> yeah um and I do like I, I think we've done some you know slightly realistic work but you're right I generally tend to be impressionistic mm -hmm. I I want to get down uh, a feeling if I can so um, um uh, your paintings are very very um emotional uh, is uh Rima I kind of lost you there I'm sorry what's that oh Sorry, I said your paintings are very emotional. Oh, yeah. They, um, they elicit an emotion when you when you look at them. Well, thank you. Yeah, I I'm so glad that happens. Hey, somebody asked about the tape, and I just want to point out that it is too early because everything is wet. Uh, I'm using like really high quality arches with really lovely um, masking tape that comes off easy. So I'm going to reveal mine. But if you want to do yours correctly, please wait for it to be dry. Um, also, if you can use a hairdryer, um, that's even better. A hairdryer and holding the tape at a um, 45 degree angle as you peel it um, is best. Um, that way you get a really nice, you know, you don't tear the surface of the paper. So excuse me while I do this bit of messy work. Um, but it is nice, right? It's very fun to reveal. Mm -hmm final image <laughs> even to ourselves we're all like oh that mess around the painting it's so distracting uh and then when you get to do this it's very satisfying all right i'm glad i got to do that i don't think i got to the stage last time i got a little better at managing my time um uh, but i know it's Kevin, we just have a few minutes, but Rima, Claudia, thank you for hanging out with me. But if you have more to say, I'm, I'm happy to listen because I also don't know what else to say now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say I'm still in the hot mess stage, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we'll we'll try and take it beyond that. I can cool. show mine. Ooh, please do. I'm not. I'm not like super thrilled with it, but I can show it. Yeah, 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 please. I, th I think it's so awesome. And you guys have so much experience. <gasps> Look at that. Ooh, nice. Rima. Rima, yeah. that's awesome. That's I just kind of spilled some gouache in the middle there and <laughs> the white blob. <laughs> yeah, right. And and again, because it's so, um, it's such a, a forgiving image, you can you can make that into anything you want. Or go yeah, over it. exactly. Hello, yeah. friends who are painting with you. That's so lovely. Oh, yeah, friends, uh, friends, oh. these are friends oh. painting. Yay! Oh my goodness, you guys rock! Wow. Can you show it? <laughs> Not that much, but you can oh. show it. Oh, these are my friends. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> we love doing uh, art together. That is such a lovely way to spend time with friends. I'll uh, I'll be brave, uh, but I'm still working on it. Show me, show me. And, oh, wow. Oh, it's backwards. Oh, it's a uh, yeah, mirror image. Oh, I'm sorry. I know the camera does that sometimes. You have to change the setting and things, but we don't have enough time for that, I think. <laughs> no, that's okay. But, but it still works. It's, it's awesome. Wow, Claudia, you got a lot done. I know I you, take, you know slower, so this is this is lovely. Yeah. Thank you so much, both of you. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is a fun image. This is a little, little crazier than the other one, but but that's what I sign up for usually with my work. <laughs> um, I wanted to thank Melissa before we all have to close for the night, and thank you, Claudia and Rima. Uh, this was so much more fun to be able to chat with you and know that you're with me while I was painting. 
Uh, and thank you to everybody who signed up and came in. If you could, I would really appreciate you guys tagging me. If you show on Facebook or Instagram, tag um, the Arts Council, tag me. Um, I'd really love to, you know, just see your images and things. It'd be so nice if you could. Um, and also the chat box. Are there any questions I've left? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. But you're welcome. Everybody, you're so welcome. I hope you had fun doing this. Emma, as we wrap up, I just want to say thank you so much. There's lots of people saying thank you. And just to remind everyone, if you want to watch the recording of this and pause and go and work at your own pace, um, that video will be uploaded to the Arts Council's YouTube channel. But everybody that registered for tonight's session will receive that link directly in your inbox. Um, so you are good to go. Hema, thank you so much. This was such a nice way to spend a Tuesday evening. Thank you, Rima and Claudia, for joining us tonight. And anything else before we hop off? No, I'm just so uh, grateful for everybody who signed on, and thank you all. Um, I, I'm hoping I can answer questions, so I hope I have access to the chat, just in case there's something that I missed, you know. Absolutely, I'll follow that along. So good night, everyone. Have a good rest of your week. Good night. Be creative. We'll see you see soon. You soon. Uh, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.